Hey YouTube, it's Penny. So um, this video is going to kind of be like a part two to um, the video that I did months ago called Mormonism and the Nephilim. So um, beginning with November 1st, I dreamt that I discovered our son in our basement and I said, does your father know you're here? And Because he, he's a grown up, he doesn't live with us anymore. Um, we both heard someone coming to the door and for some reason, I quickly threw a blanket over Matthew to hide him. The person who walked into the room looked exactly like Matthew, but I knew it wasn't him. It was a, an imposter or an imitation. So I believe the father was, he wasn't necessarily showing me anything specifically about cloning, but he was showing me something about um, an imitation. Okay, so on November 7th, I had one of the most amazing dreams or visions to date. Um, it was a very vivid, I believe it was a, I don't know, <laughs> dreams and visions are hard to distinguish sometimes. Um, I'll call it a dream because I was actually in it. So it was in full technicolor. It was almost like it was beyond three dimensional, like it was four dimensional or something, I don't know. I knew at the time that I was receiving um, a vision even though I was you know, in it. Um, and I purposely was telling myself, stay calm, like, don't wake up, because a lot of times I'll wake up too soon um, before it's, you know, finished. Okay, so I was in the ocean, or sea. Um, I was in the surf, in the shallow area, you know, facing the beach. There were waves that were coming in. They were only like three feet high, and I was jumping over them, um, kind of like playing out in the surf. And, but I was thinking to myself, this isn't a storm surge, as though something like that had been predicted. Um, I put my feet up um, so that I was floating, kind of like I did in the Dead Sea, um, and I, I was floating in towards the shoreline. Okay, so at that point, there appeared before me two arches with space in, in between them. So one was closer to me, one was further away. It looked something like this. Um, past the second arch, I could see a beautiful beach uh, and a rushing river. Um, so the beach was beyond and then there was like flowing water that was out in front of it and it was um, flowing off to the right. As I approached the first arch, I floated past this huge cliff of sheer, it was just a, a sheer cliff. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous and I remember thinking, I can't believe the Lord is showing me something so beautiful. Um, it looked like the entire cliff had been made out of mother of pearl, and I was just marveling um, at you know how gracious the Lord was to show me this, and it looked something like this. These pictures obviously don't do it justice. I can't recreate the things that I'm shown in the spiritual realm. So I floated under the first arch. And I was amazed at the sound as I passed through it. It was like Dolby digital sound or something. I could hear the flowing water echoing off the rocks above me. Um, and it looked something like this. So as I entered the space now in between, I've come out of this first arch and I'm in between this, the space that's in between these two arches. My body started to feel all tingly and I wondered, you know, what was happening. Then a row of screens appeared on my left, just screens. I, I don't know, TV screens, computer screens, I have no idea. Um, and a group of people at an outdoor restaurant were on my right. Um, they weren't sitting down though, they were standing like you would at a cocktail party or something. And they were under this round pergola um, it looked kind of like a, com a combination of these two photographs. Okay, so I, and I started to wake up and was really, you know, kind of frustrated um, that these, you know, TV screens and this, um, these people, uh, like, what were they doing there in this, you know, beautiful, natural surrounding, I was having this amazing experience, and then all of a sudden I see this and my body gets all tingly and I wake up. Um, upon waking, I heard the words mechanics and the word light. 
and at first I thought, the mechanics of light, you know, I wasn't sure. Um, so I just wrote it down. Um, later, as I was falling back to sleep and kind of like, you know, kind of reliving this dream and, and thinking about it and praying about it, I heard the word Mormonism. Okay. On November 7th, uh, in my dream journal, I wrote down the words, another dream about jewelry. And I realized later that what I meant was that first dream that I'd had where I was shown the mother of pearl cliff was a dream about jewelry. You know, a lot of jewelry is made out of mother of pearl. Okay, so in this dream, I was upset because someone had let a very young girl, like three or four years old, wear my wedding ring and my expensive sapphire earrings. I only own, you know, this is like the two things of uh, any value that I that I own, and I was upset about it. And but when I got up close to the little girl um, to try to explain to her, you know, I can't wear my jewelry. Um, I noticed that they were cheap imitations of my jewelry. So again, I was showing something it was an imitation. Okay. Uh, the next night, November eighth, I dreamt about a man who was dressed in a mechanics jumpsuit. So here's this word mechanics. Um, he was in our house and he was trying to find something for us in a, a book or a manual. Um, and he was there for a very long time trying to find this. Um, and cause he was saying that it was something that we needed to know. Um, you know, but he was the, he was the mechanic. He was the expert in whatever this manual was, but he couldn't find it. So he eventually gave up and left our house. So I believe that the Lord was showing me kind of like how Mormons will come to your house. And then if you ask and, you know, they tell you like they have information that's you know, really important and you need to know this. But then like, if you ask them specific questions, they can't find it in their manual, which would be, you know, the Book of Mormon or the Pearl of Great Price. Like, so I think that's the connection to the Mother of Pearl um, that I was shown. Okay. November 12th. Uh, I dreamt that a man was passing out sheets of paper to everyone and instructing us to write down the names of 10 boys who we thought needed counseling, like he was asking for referrals. The paper had, you know, this elaborate chart on it and all these boxes for information to be filled in, and I started to fill out the boxes, but the man said that we didn't have time for all of that, so just write down the names. So I don't know why he was in such a hurry, but I could only think of one person and I wrote down so-and-so Bronson. I don't remember the person's first name, um, but when this guy asked me why I was recommending this particular young man for counseling, I said, because he's the nephew of Charles Bronson. Wouldn't you need counseling if he was your uncle? <laughs> and I woke up. Okay, so I had to look up who Charles Bronson is or was. He's now deceased. And I discovered that he started in many movies but the one that actually caught my attention was called The Mechanic from 1972, and it was remade recently in 2011. And he also starred in a movie called Messenger of Death, which was about Mormonism. Okay, so the Lord is clearly showing me Mormonism is tied to the Nephilim, um, as you know, in the previous video that I did. Um, where that, you know, that tall giant guy was dressed basically as a Mormon. Um, he's showing me that their books, the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, are imitations um, of the true word of Elohim. That um, this, this whole thing about when he said mechanics and he said light, I believe the reason that he gave me the word light is because the angel Moroni that is atop all of the Mormon temples. Um, I believe that he is Lucifer or Satan or um, whatever this demonic entity who appeared to Joseph Smith as an angel of light. So um, I'm going to connect. I'll put a link in the description box to the, the first video I did on Mormonism and the Nephilim, but the father's definitely you know, painting a picture for us here and we need to pay attention to it. And um, 
also there's a lot of connection between the Church of Mormon, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as they call themselves, and Freemasonry. Um, so uh, if, if you're led to investigate that further, um, you know, feel free. I, I've looked into it quite a bit, and uh, it's, uh, it's creepy stuff, <laughs> I think. So, Rukata Adonai Elohim Malek Ha'olam, blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the Universe.